8, Medicosis Perfectionis, or Medicine Makes Perfect Sense, and today we'll compare between atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome and thrombotic thrombus atypenic purpura. So let's get started. But first, let me answer the question of the previous video. In TTP, why do we treat using plasma exchange via cryosupernatant and not through cryoprecipitate? That's a very good question, by the way. So here is the deal. Here's your lovely test tube. And then you leave it like this. Okay, and then you have something on the top and something in the bottom like this. Whatever is on the bottom is called the precipitate. In this case, it's cryoprecipitate. And what's on the top is the cryo supernatant. In TTP, we use the cryosupernatant and not the cryoprecipitate. But why is that? Because the cryoprecipitate contains von Willebrand factor. And if you remember, the pathophysiology of TTP included a problem in Adam TS13. When we have a problem with Adam TS13, we cannot break down the von Willebrand factor multimers into small monomers. So the problem in TTP was actually freaking von Willebrand factor. And you would like to treat the patient with cryoprecipitate, which contains von Willebrand factor. You're what's known as woke. So that's why we do not use the cryoprecipitate. Instead, we use the cryosupernatant because it does not contain the von Willebrand factor. As you know, hemolytic uremic syndrome is divided into atypical and typical. Typical is known as diarrhea positive. Atypical is known as diarrhea negative. Atypical is also the primary HUS. Typical is the secondary HUS because it's secondary to E. coli 0157H7. TTP, on the other hand, is inherited or acquired. Inherited, there is an enzyme deficiency. There is a genetic deficiency where we do not have ADMTS13. Acquired, however, we have the ADMTS13, but there is an inhibitor, so it's basically useless. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, this one is the typical. It has the triad microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure with bloody diarrhea and E. coli. Thrombotic thread, thrombocytopenic purpura, there is no bloody diarrhea, and there is a pentad. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms. Remember, this was the typical HUS. And here's the typical HUS, which we have discussed before. And here is TTP. Remember the Adam TS13 defect. Remember it's an emergency. Remember the pentad. Remember not to give platelets or antibiotics. Hemolytic uremic syndrome is a triad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure. Which one is this? This is the typical, the diarrhea positive, the secondary HUS. But TTP is a freaking pentad, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms, usually altered mental status. There is another classification for HUS. We have the primary and secondary. Primary is the same as diarrhea negative, is the same thing as atypical, happens in adults. However, secondary is the diarrhea positive HUS, typical, and happens in children. Okay. Let's talk about atypical HUS, which is today's topic. The cause, complement gene mutation or antibodies to the complement factor H. The typical was the one related to the E. coli 0157H7. How about TTP, inherited and acquired? Inherited, there is a genetic deficiency of the ADMTS13 gene deficiency. Acquired, there is an inhibitor, usually an IgG antibody against the ADMTS13. In both cases, the enzyme activity of ADMTS13 in the plasma is less than 10% of normal, which is horrible. Let's compare between atypical HUS and TTP. This is today's topic. Atypical HUS. We have the same pentad that we see in TTP. So remember, typical was just a triad, but atypical HUS is the same pentad as with TTP. However, there is a difference. First, what's the pentad? Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure, fever, and neurological symptoms. Same thing with atypical. The difference is which one is more common. Renal failure is more common in atypical HUS than in TTP. That's why renal failure here is written in big letters, but here very tiny letters. On the other hand, neurological symptoms are more common with TTP than with atypical HUS. That's why here is bigger than here. Etiology. Complement gene mutation or antibodies to the complement factor. How about TTP? Defect in the ADMTS13 enzyme. 
it could be a deficiency of the enzyme, we call this inherited TTP, or it could be an inhibitor to the enzyme, we call this an acquired TTP. Epidemiology, children in atypical HES, young adults in TTP. How about the blood film or the peripheral smear? We see schistocytes in both of them. Schistocytes are the same thing as helmet cells or fragmented cells or fragmented RBCs. Lab results are very similar, bleed count is low, bleeding time is high because it's a primary hemostasis defect. PT and PTT are normal because the secondary hemostasis is normal. RBCs are low, hemoglobin is low, hematocrit is low because it's a freaking anemia. MCV is normal because it's a normocytic anemia. LDH is high, bilirubin is high, heptoglobin is low because it's a hemolytic, normocytic anemia. BUN and creatinine could be high in either because of the acute renal failure, but remember, acute renal failure is way more common in atypical HES than TTP. So expect BUN and creatinine to be high in atypical HES. It's not so common with TTP. Microscopic hematuria, of course, will be more common with atypical HES. How about the enzyme ADMTS13 activity in the plasma? In atypical HES, it could be actually normal. Of course, normal is more than 10%. Normal is 100% of normal, by definition. However, in TTP, the atom TS13 is screwed, so the enzyme activity is less than 10%. Treatment of atypical HES. We have supportive care. Symptomatic uremia, you go with dialysis, and sometimes we even try renal transplant because these are children and they have complement G mutation or antibodies to the complement factor H. And acute renal failure is very common. Eculizumab. That's a monoclonal antibody against complement, which has replaced plasma exchange as the drug of choice. The gold standard therapy. If it didn't work, you can try immunosuppressants. How about TTP? It's a freaking emergency. You go with plasmapheresis, plasma exchange with fresh frozen plasma because it has the atom TS13. Cryo supernatant because it has the atom TS13. Why not cryoprecipitate? Because cryoprecipitate has the von Philipp brand factor. Do not give platelets. Do not give antibiotics. Let's talk about the comparison that actually matters. Typical HES versus TTP. Typical HES has the acute diarrhea, the injured endothelium, and blood in the stool. And remember the famous triad, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, renal failure. How about TTP? In TTP, you have a problem with Adam TS13, and you have a pentad of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, renal failure, fever beaver, and neurological abnormalities. And these two animated slides were from Picmonic. Now look at this, typical HES versus TTP. Typical HES is a triad, not a pentad. And of course, bloody diarrhea is here, but it was absent in atypical HES. Renal failure, of course, is possible. What's the cause? Shigalike toxin of the EHEC. It's idiopathic. Children, schistocytes, same labs, blood in the stool, this is unique, screen for the EHEC. Treatment, it's a self-limited disease, so provide supportive care with fluids and electrolytes. If there is uremia, you go with dialysis, and you can give RBCs if there is severe anemia. Do not give platelets, do not give antibiotics. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here, get my premium courses here, go to Picmonic here. Thank you for watching, as always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.